Ancient genomes from Eurasia have identified three ancestral populations that contributed to the genetic makeup of contemporary Europeans in varying proportions. Mesolithic individuals found from Spain to Hungary belong to a relatively uniform group called Western hunter-gatherers. The expansion of early farmers from the Levant during the Neolithic transition significantly altered the European gene pool, nearly replacing the population in the south and mixing with local Western hunter-gatherers populations further north. Later, during the early Bronze Age, a migration wave from the Yamnaya people of the Pontic steppe introduced ancestry from ancient North Eurasians and an additional, unidentified source, significantly impacting the populations and creating a gradient of admixture in Eastern and Central Europe. Initially based on a limited number of genomes, this view has been confirmed by extensive surveys of Eurasian samples from the Holocene. Scientists have expanded our understanding of the genetic makeup of early Europeans by looking further back in time and analyzing samples from the critical crossroads between Europe and Asia. They sequenced genomes from two ancient individuals found in western Georgia at the eastern edge of Europe, a late upper Paleolithic individual from Satserblia cave and a Mesolithic individual from Cortius Calder cave respectively. These individuals have been identified as Caucasus hunter-gatherers. To complement this new data and extend the understanding of Western hunter-gatherers to a similar time frame, the scientists also sequenced a late Upper Paleolithic genome from Western Europe known as Bichon, found in Grotte de Bichon, Switzerland. The combination of these new genomes with previously published data provides a more comprehensive geographic and temporal overview of genetic diversity across Europe following the last glacial maximum. The research reveals that the Caucasus hunter-gatherers belong to a distinct ancient lineage that diverged from Western hunter-gatherers around 45,000 years ago and from the ancestors of Neolithic farmers about 25,000 years ago. This lineage represents the previously unknown source of ancestry for the Yamnaya people and has directly contributed to the genetic makeup of modern populations from the Caucasus to Central Asia. Recent excavations at Satserblia cave in western Georgia uncovered a human right temporal bone dating back to the late Upper Paleolithic period, approximately 13,000 years ago. By extracting DNA from the dense part of this bone, scientists were able to sequence enough of the human genome to cover the full genome. In another find, a molar tooth was discovered in a later Mesolithic burial site at Kotias Kilde, a rock shelter also in western Georgia, dating back to approximately 9,500 years ago. This tooth was very well preserved, containing 76.9% human DNA. Kotias and Satserblia, the two Caucasus hunter-gatherers, are genetically distinct from all other early Holocene ancient genomes, which include Mesolithic and Neolithic samples. On the other hand, Bichon, a Western hunter-gatherer, shows genetic similarities to other younger Western hunter-gatherers. This genetic difference is clearly visible in a principal component analysis plot that maps contemporary Eurasian populations. In this plot, the Caucasus hunter-gatherers appear in a region between modern Caucasian and South Central Asian populations, distinctly separated from both other hunter-gatherers and early farmers. When analyzed using admixture software, which groups individuals based on genetic similarities, the Caucasus hunter-gatherers form their own unique cluster, highlighting their genetic uniqueness. Furthermore, the close genetic relationship between Satsublia and Cotius is confirmed by D-statistics, which show that these two genomes belong to a distinct group, separate from other ancient genomes that existed before the Bronze Age. This suggests that there was a continuous genetic lineage in the Caucasus from the late Upper Paleolithic through the Mesolithic periods. Similarly, in Western Europe, Bichon is closely related to other Western hunter-gatherers, as shown by its position in the PCA plot and outgroup F3 analysis. It belongs to the same cluster as other Western hunter-gatherers in the admixture analysis, and forms a distinct group with them, separate from other ancient genomes, according to D-statistics. This indicates a persistent genetic lineage in Western Europe as well, from the late Upper Paleolithic to the Mesolithic periods. Given the Southern Caucasus's close proximity to the Levant, 
it's natural to wonder whether the Caucasus hunter-gatherers might be related to early Neolithic farmers who had Near Eastern heritage. To explore this possibility, scientists analyzed the relationships among Western hunter-gatherers, Caucasus hunter-gatherers, and early farmers using high-quality ancient genomes. They employed a method called outgroup F3 statistics to compare three possible evolutionary scenarios. The correct scenario is identified by finding the two groups that have the most shared genetic history when compared to a different, unrelated group. The analysis showed the strongest support for a scenario in which the population ancestral to both Caucasus hunter-gatherers and early farmers split from the Western hunter-gatherers. This suggests that Caucasus hunter-gatherers and early farmers are more closely related to each other than to Western hunter-gatherers. The study also ruled out the possibility that Caucasus hunter-gatherers and Western hunter-gatherers form a distinct group separate from early farmers. The researchers then estimated when Western hunter-gatherers, Caucasus hunter-gatherers, and early farmers split from each other genetically using a special model. This model was based on the high coverage genomes in their data set, using the German farmer Stuttgart to represent early farmers and incorporating the mutation rate recently derived from the Oost Ishim individual. According to the model, the split between Western hunter gatherers and the population ancestral to both Caucasus hunter gatherers and early farmers occurred approximately 40,000 to 50,000 years ago. This suggests that these groups diverged early during the colonization of Europe, well before the last glacial maximum. Within the Western hunter-gatherer lineage, the split between Bichon and Lochbor is dated to around 16,000 to 18,000 years ago, which aligns with the age of Bichon and indicates continuity in Western Europe, supporting previous findings. The split between Caucasus hunter-gatherers and early farmers is estimated to have occurred around 20,000 to 30,000 years ago, emerging from a common basal Eurasian lineage. This timing may be linked to the last glacial maximum, although the wide confidence intervals suggest that this interpretation should be approached with caution. Despite the close timing, the sharp genetic distinctions between these post-last glacial maximum populations contrast with the relative lack of differentiation among earlier Eurasian genomes, as seen in the admixture analysis. It is likely that these genetic structures emerge due to habitat restrictions during the Ice Age. Interestingly, like early farmers, but unlike Western hunter-gatherers, Caucasus hunter-gatherers carry a variant of the SLC24A5 gene associated with light skin color. This variant, which is believed to have become common during the Neolithic expansion, may have a much longer history in Eurasia, possibly originating before the last glacial maximum a partial genome from a 24,000-year-old individual known as MA1 found in Malta, Siberia, was discovered to be genetically distinct from other ancient samples. Research using F4 statistics revealed that MA1 shares more genetic similarities with nearly all modern Europeans than with early farmer genomes. This finding led to the identification of an ancient North Eurasian component in European ancestry. This ancient North Eurasian influence was later traced in eastern hunter-gatherers and was spread into Europe through the migration of steppe herders around 4,500 years ago. However, several analyses suggest that the genomes of Caucasus hunter-gatherers are not a subset of the ancient North Eurasian lineage. First, MA1 and Caucasus hunter-gatherers occupy distinct regions in the principal component analysis and show very different profiles in the admixture analysis. Second, tests to determine if Caucasus hunter-gatherers share more alleles with MA1 than with Western hunter-gatherers using a method called D-statistics showed no significant positive results, indicating no excess allele sharing between Caucasus hunter-gatherers and MA1. Finally, further tests were conducted to see if the genetic component in modern Europeans inferred from MA1 was different from any genetic contributions from Caucasus hunter-gatherers. The results showed that Northern Europeans significantly share alleles with MA1, distinct from those shared with Caucasus hunter-gatherers. Western hunter-gatherers and Caucasus hunter-gatherers are descendants of two ancient populations that seem to have persisted in Europe since the mid-Upper Paleolithic period, 
surviving the last glacial maximum separately. To explore this, researchers examined runs of homozygosity, which provide insights into past population sizes. Both Western hunter-gatherers and Caucasus hunter-gatherers exhibit a high frequency of these runs, indicating small population sizes in the past. Notably, the older Caucasus hunter-gatherer from Satsurblia shows signs of recent inbreeding, with a high frequency of longer runs of homozygosity, suggesting that the population was quite small and isolated. In contrast, early farmers show a much lower frequency of runs of homozygosity across all sizes, which implies that their population history was less constricted. This might indicate that early farmers experienced a more stable and less challenging passage through the last glacial maximum compared to the more northern populations like the Western and Caucasus hunter-gatherers. The researchers then investigated how much Bichon and the Caucasus hunter-gatherers have contributed to contemporary populations. Bichon, similar to other Western hunter-gatherers, shows the strongest genetic connection to modern Northern Europeans. On the other hand, contemporary populations in the Southern Caucasus are most closely related to the Caucasus hunter-gatherers. This suggests a degree of genetic continuity in both regions that stretches back at least 13,000 years to the late Upper Paleolithic. This continuity in the Caucasus is further supported by the mitochondrial and Y chromosomal haplogroups found in Cotias and Satserblia, two ancient individuals from the region. The haplogroups identified in these individuals, H13C and J2A for Cotias, and K3 and J for Satserblia, are still found at high frequencies in Georgia today, reinforcing the idea of a long-standing genetic lineage in the region. Early farmers share a stronger genetic connection with populations from southern Europe compared to those from northern Europe, while the opposite is true for western hunter-gatherers. Interestingly, the researchers found that the influence of Caucasus hunter-gatherers is more pronounced in northern Europe than in southern Europe, despite the fact that Caucasus hunter-gatherers are more closely related to early farmers than to western hunter-gatherers. The researchers explored the timeline of Caucasus hunter-gatherer influence by comparing their data to previously published ancient genomes. They discovered that the Caucasus hunter-gatherers, or a population closely related to them, contributed to the genetic makeup of individuals from the Yamnaya culture. The Yamnaya are known for their significant spread of Pontic steppe ancestry into Europe and Central Asia during the third millennium BC bringing with them advancements like metallurgy, horse riding, and possibly Indo-European languages. This Caucasus hunter-gatherer ancestry in the Yamnaya is supported by admixture analysis and admixture F3 statistics, which describe the Yamnaya as a genetic mix of Caucasus hunter-gatherers and Eastern European hunter-gatherers. The Yamnaya were semi-nomadic pastoralists, relying mainly on livestock, but also showing some evidence of agriculture such as the incorporation of a plow into a burial. Interestingly, despite their agricultural practices, the Yamnaya lacked genetic ties to the early farmer's genome, which had already spread through Western European Neolithic and later agricultural populations. During the early Bronze Age, the Caucasus region was in contact with the Stepe, particularly through the Mykop culture, which emerged in the first half of the fourth millennium BC the Maikop culture, possibly influenced by earlier southern populations, may have contributed to the formation of the Yamnaya culture to the north, potentially serving as a conduit for Caucasus hunter-gatherer ancestry. In the admixture analysis of later ancient genomes, the Caucasus component serves as a marker for the spread of Yamnaya ancestry, showing substantial contributions to both Western and Eastern Bronze Age populations, However, this influence is not universally linked to the spread of metallurgy. For instance, Copper Age genomes from northern Italy and Hungary show no evidence of this contribution, and neither does the earlier of two Hungarian Bronze Age individuals. In modern populations, the influence of Caucasus hunter-gatherers extends beyond Europe and reaches into Central and South Asia. Genetic evidence shows that Central and South Asian populations received significant genetic input from Caucasus hunter-gatherers, or a closely related population. It has been proposed that modern Indian populations are a blend of two ancestral components, 
an ancestral North Indian component, which is related to modern West Eurasians, and an ancestral South Indian component, which is more distantly related to the Ong, an indigenous group from the Andaman Islands. The genome from Cortius, a Caucasus hunter-gatherer, serves as the best match for the ancestral North Indian component. The admixture between these two ancestral components in the ancestors of Indian populations is estimated to have occurred relatively recently, between 1,900 and 4,200 years ago. This period is possibly associated with migrations that brought Indo-European languages and Vedic religion to the region. Several analyses have shown that Caucasus hunter-gatherers are distinct from another inferred minor ancestral population, the ancient North Eurasians, making them a unique and divergent fourth strand of European ancestry, which adds complexity to our understanding of the human colonization of Europe. The long-standing separation between Caucasus hunter-gatherers, early farmers, and Western hunter-gatherers came to an end during the early Bronze Age, when a major ancestral component linked to the Caucasus hunter-gatherers was introduced into Europe by migrating herders from the Eurasian steppe. This transformative migration was led by the Yamnaya culture, which is estimated to derive half of its ancestry from sources linked to Caucasus hunter-gatherers. Through the Yamnaya, the ancestral lineage of the Caucasus hunter-gatherers became a significant contributor to the genetic makeup of most modern European populations, particularly in Northern Europe. Additionally, the influence of Caucasus hunter-gatherer ancestry extended eastward, becoming a major contributor to the ancestral North Indian component found in the Indian subcontinent. The identification of Caucasus hunter-gatherers as a fourth ancestral component of the European gene pool highlights the importance of thorough geographical sampling of ancient human genomes, especially from diverse regions. The distinct separation of this ancestral strand from other European lineages came to an end with the widespread population, linguistic, and technological changes of the early Bronze Age, resulting in a far-reaching impact on contemporary populations across regions as vast as the Atlantic to Central and South Asia. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.